When you think of a creature created in a lab, what springs to mind? Frankenstein's monster? Perhaps the fly? Maybe even the Incredible Hulk? Well, a lot of the time, in reality, the creatures that scientists are tinkering with are much less impressive, and sometimes they make hybrid species entirely by accident. From a chicken that's grown to be an instant nugget, to a pig that has less toxic poo, here are 20 hybrid animals created by scientists you won't believe exist. Number 20. Human Ear Mouse Here we go, straight in with one of the most famous of lab creations, the Vacanti Mouse. That's the mouse with a human ear on its back. You know, that one. Back in the late 1990s, there were a couple of doctors from Harvard, brothers named Joseph Charles Vacanti, and an engineer from MIT named Bob Langer. Now, these guys were not out to create Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. No, they actually had a much more useful idea in mind. They wanted to develop a way to create human body parts in a lab. It does sound kind of like a horror movie, but hear me out a minute. They wanted to be able to genetically engineer body parts for people who had lost them, either through accidents or illness. And this noble cause was inspired by the organ shortage of the 1980s. They had hoped to begin the blueprints for building all kinds of body bits in a laboratory. It's completely connected to the blood vessels. Anyways, one of the things that surgeons found to be most difficult to reconstruct in patients was missing ears. They're an awkward and fiddly shaped thing, so that's where they decided to begin. The scientists were trying to build biodegradable scaffoldings that would dissolve in the body and use them to grow body parts. They only managed to reach this stage of the process before the funding dwindled so they've not yet been able to bring the extraordinary engineering to the human stage. And there aren't any people walking around with Vacanti ears. Not yet, anyways. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Right, this image that you're looking at now purports itself to be some sort of evidence of a hybrid creature that has been created in a lab. But I don't know. It seems ever so slightly like a fabrication to me. What hybrid is this bald and earless rabbit human thing? Alien naked kangaroo? Maybe a frog person? Nobody really knows. But what do you think? And should we all be worried about it? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let me know what you think in relation to what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. Spider Goat A little goat named Freckles may appear to be exactly like all the other little goats, except that she's not. She is, in fact, the only one of her kind on the planet. At the moment, that is. Freckles is not only a goat, she's also part spider. But why? Researchers at Utah State University are developing an entire new field of study where they're using genetic engineering to build animals that make things that humans want. Weird and creepy if you think about it. Freckles has been crossed with spider DNA in an effort to understand the dragline silk that spiders will use to catch themselves when they fall. Apparently, this spider-spun silk is incredibly strong, even stronger than Kevlar, and I guess that's why there are certain people who are hoping to harness its technology. I mean, who might want something like that, you know? Why put it in a goat? Well, to start off with, you cannot farm spiders. They are apt to eat each other, so that makes working with them just a little bit tricky. The idea behind the goat-spider combo is that the spider-silk gene would be placed into the DNA that stimulates milk production in the goat. That goat will then make milk that contains spider silk proteins. He's actually one of the very original goats that was created. And the milk can be processed in the lab, leaving behind only the silk. As of now, they're in the testing stages of using these super strong threads in the human body to repair ligaments. So soon, people may well be walking around with bits of spider goat holding them together. It sure is a weird old world out there. Number 18. Featherless Chickens Now here's one for all of those ethical questions you may have. If we're being honest, all the breeding of any animals for food or show or pets or whatever, it's kind of like genetic tinkering. But this kind of so-called engineering may be on another level altogether. 
The featherless chicken is a genetically engineered bird that has been designed by humans to limit the need to pluck the creature in order to eat them. Isn't that just lovely? Even if you like to eat chicken, there's something just the teeniest bit icky about creating an animal whose sole purpose is to become deep fried and not only that, it won't even inconvenience you with all those pesky feathers that they'd normally come with. Fewer processes for the chicken to go through means bigger profits for the commercial meat industry. And that, isn't it always, is the only reason to do anything, really. Who even cares that it's all messed up? Those chicken tendies don't taste any different because the bird was made from cold and bald and lived a short, painful life of forced accelerated growth, now is it? Well, what a fun one. How do you feel about building genetically modified animals to make the process of turning them into nuggets even quicker and more profitable? Let's have a massive row about it all in the comments down below, shall we? Go on, I know you want to. Number 17. Zebroids So, when a zebra has a special cuddle with any sort of equine creature outside of other zebras, any potential offspring from such a moment is known as a zebroid. This is a word that is oh so cleverly combining zebra and hybrid. Anyway, there are words for all the various exotic combinations, depending on whether the male was a zebra or the female, and then what kind of creature got involved with all that special cuddling in the first place. We'll look at a couple of these later on, but for now, the rundown of various combos includes any sprogs from a donkey sire and zebra dam, they're called a donkra, more on them in a bit. And then there are horse sire zebra dam babies that are called hebra. These are rare and usually sterile because, well, this is not really a combination that is exactly supposed to be out there making babies. Beyond these are a bunch of others which are usually named by combining the names of the sire and the dam. And there are plenty of weird and wonderful mixtures available if you happen to like that sort of thing. Number 16. Gen Pet. This next one is not an actual animal, but rather a highly creepy and kind of gross art installation thing by an artist by the name of Adam Branges. This weird show has been called a hoax of exposure, which basically means that this was a hoax that was deliberately presented as reality so that the people viewing or experiencing it were meant to be duped into believing the validity of the hoax. In this case, the so-called artist wanted to try and fool people into thinking that his creepy latex and plastic creatures were actually bioengineered humanoids that were available to purchase as pets. They were displayed in packages and said to be dormant until activated by the purchaser. They came in a selection of colors with different personalities from which to choose, and apparently people were fooled. The sculptures were realistic enough, and the packaging website and accompanying story had some people drawn in. But what do you think about these creepy gen pets? Let's get into a heated debate about it in the comments down below. Number 15. The Super Ball Python A ball python is a breed of snake that is native to the grasslands of Central and West Africa. They're a non-venomous constrictor and are actually the smallest of the African python species. But apparently, these incredible reptiles needed some sprucing up, according to some designer pet weirdos anyway. And this one is the Super Ball Python. This is a new hybrid designer snake, and for goodness sake, it's the latest in a succession of ball python hybrids. These ones are a mixture of a ball python, you know, the African original sort, and a marble Borneo short tail python or blood python. The reason they've been mixing these snakes is apparently aesthetics. It makes the resulting reptiles extra beautiful. Well, extra patterny anyways. There is some limited evidence that these new snazzy pythons may not need such intensely careful climate control as the blood pythons, but they are so new that nobody really knows for sure. Really though, why? I mean, why? Perhaps all the climate control stuff just means that snakes, at least some of them, are really not appropriate pets. Do you own a snake as a pet? And if so, tell me why. Number 14. Jellyfish Rabbits 
Ah, uh, this one creeps me out even more than the others so far, and that's really saying something. I've been doing this channel a long time. This is Alba. She was a bunny rabbit that was engineered in a lab to glow like the luminescent light that some jellyfish display. Apparently, this was for art, but frankly, that is a horrifying Frankenstein's monster sort of explanation. Anyways, she was the messed up idea of a so-called artist, or perhaps animal torturer, named Eduardo Cac who worked with French geneticist named Louis-Marie Houdebin to build this poor bunny. They used the same genes found in jellyfish and added it to the rabbit. And then when she was exposed to blue light, she would glow green. This is not art. This is vivisection. Although no straight answers have ever been established, it is well understood that the rabbit died, and nobody knows for sure how long that she actually lived. Number 13. The Human Pig Science is always attempting new and crazy things in the hopes of improving human lives, but sometimes those experiments seem like terrifying nightmares, and they're certainly giving a whole lot of people the heebie-jeebies. So, why on earth would you want to create a human-pig hybrid in a lab? What could this possibly offer to the improvement of human life? It turns out that the idea is not all that far removed from the old ear-mouse experiment. Scientists are attempting to develop a way to grow human organs inside of animals to use them in transplants. It really could be the beginning of a horror story, but it may just be the beginning of an incredible life-saving breakthrough as well. This experiment has, naturally, caused a whole lot of controversy, as these things probably should, and it's definitely the right thing to ask some questions. The funding for the project was put on hold while these ethical questions were considered, and just because science can do something doesn't necessarily mean that it should. This particular experiment has raised the specter of different species having humanized brains and the idea of them being released by accident into the wild. I mean, if the movies can imagine it, right? Number 12. The Liger as pretty much Napoleon Dynamite's favorite animal, and perhaps the most well-known of the bizarre hybrids on our list, the Liger is, of course, a combination of a lion and a tiger. This makes it the largest of all the big cats, and it's known to grow up to a whopping 12 feet. In order for an animal to be considered a Liger, it needs to be the specific creation of a male lion and a female tiger. The other way around would produce a Tigan, apparently. Don't worry, there's much more about them later. And these animals usually get to be much bigger than either of their parents, sharing a bunch of different characteristics from each of them. In general, though, they're more like a lion than they are a tiger overall. Male ligers will have a mane, but it'll usually be shorter than a lion's. And generally, ligers will have tawny collaring like a lion, but with the addition of the faint tiger stripes. And when they roar, it's going to sound a lot like a lion as well. Although people seem to have a bit of a fixation on this hybrid animal, they would not occur naturally in the wild since lions and tigers do not share the same habitats, so they would likely never come into contact. And I am sorry to break it to you, but contact is the necessary, even if icky, process of making a baby. So it turns out that people have had rather an inappropriate amount of involvement in the love lives of these two animals. Ligers only exist in captivity, the result of accidental or sometimes deliberate tinkering by those pesky matchmaking humans. Number 11. Blood Parrot Chiclid Fish Now, sometimes the incessant prodding and poking around in the genetic makeup of various animals can actually do them harm. This is the general issue with all of these crossbreeding for aesthetic purposes. The blood parrot chiclet fish is one such creature, which has developed a bunch of problems as a result of being engineered to within an inch of its life. The blood parrot chiclet is an aquarium fish hybrid species that was created by crossing a couple of different species, but in the style of a Frankenstein's monster, something kind of went wrong. This fish is the source of a whole load of controversy, even amongst the fish fanciers of the aquarium-keeping world. Apparently, the particular genetic juice that this fish has wound up with leaves it with such a tiny little mouth that it can't actually eat properly. Which, in case it's not obvious, is a fairly sizable problem for any creature that needs to take in food in order to grow and produce energy. This fish simply cannot thrive as it should, which frankly sucks, and it's such a controversial little fish that some aquarium enthusiasts will even boycott pet shops that sell the creature. Despite all of it, though, there are always those with a different opinion who are unperturbed by such trifles as an inability to thrive and like the beaky head and big-eyed appearance of the hybrid fish. 
But what do you think about this fishy business? Is it immoral to poke around in a fish's DNA? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Number 10. The Pizzly Bear As melting sea ice of the Arctic continues to shrink the polar bear's territory, these previously very cold climate-dwelling creatures are going further afield in the hunt for food. At the same time, grizzly bears from Alaska and Canada are making their way further north as temperatures increase in their habitats. It is making for some unusual hookups. The pizzly bear, or the growler bear as it's also known, is the result of some adult interactions between these two larger bear species. In the past, they would not have come across each other, but times and climates are changing and the barriers between the bears are tumbling down. Funnily enough, sometimes the natural world really does seem to be adapting before our very eyes. Pizzly bears are actually better suited for the environment. As the climate continues to change, they're better able to live in a warmer weather than the polar bear, and they don't rely on the disappearing sea ice for their ability to hunt since they don't require a specialty diet of blubber like the polar bears do. Grizzly bears have a more varied diet, which makes them more adaptable to changing conditions and seasons. And also, this is one of the characteristics that the hybrid pizzly bear has developed, and that makes the animal a future-proofing crossbreed. These two species beginning to breed in the wild offers them both bear benefits for the survival of their offspring, and it even does mean that the polar bears, as a separate species, may eventually cease to exist. Number 9. The Geep in an unusual turn of events, a sheep and a goat might successfully mate and create a super rare sheep-goat hybrid, or the daffly named Geep. I mean, seriously, you gotta be kidding me. And I came home then and I was asking a few lads and they said nothing, nothing, nothing had happened. Now, despite these two species seeming very similar and often sharing the same domesticated habits, they are actually genetically incompatible most of the time. Goats have 60 chromosomes and sheep have 54, and that makes it tricky for these animals to produce any kind of offspring that can make it beyond the embryonic stage because of the genetic issues that such incompatibilities will bring about. So when a healthy hybrid baby is born, it really is unusual. Back in 2014, one of these special combos was born on a farm in the Republic of Ireland, and the little geep was such a novelty that the farmer called in the television news crews to document the remarkable moment. It was a cute scene with the mother sheep taking care of her baby like she regularly would, and the little geep did indeed have a different appearance to the other lambs on the farm. He could actually run faster as well, and that's the makings of a movie plot right there. Number 8. The Koi Wolf Oh dear, it seems as though coyotes and wolves have been meeting up for secret trysts in the wild, and some of them may have missed the class on how to avoid making a baby. The results of the interspecies love affairs have been popping up all over the place in Canada. Dubbed the Koi Wolf, which is so original, I mean, how long did it take them to come up with that one? This animal is becoming more commonplace in urban areas. And it is time that people paid attention, at least a little bit anyways. It sucks to be livestock with these creatures around, because not only are the coyotes likely to cause a bit of a rumpus down on the farm, so do the wolves as well, and they're able to hunt together in a bigger and more organized way. Those are the characteristics that the koi wolf seems to have really run with in its development of its personality as well. These animals are stone cold killers, and they've just doubled up on their murderous skill set. Number 7. The Jag Lion Now, here we have a crossbreed of a specifically male jaguar and female lion. Again, with the exotic crossbreeding for zoo attractions, you know. The Jag Lion is also sometimes known as the Jaguan, and when things are extremely rare, names often haven't even been decided on properly yet. Both the Jaguar and the Lion share quite a lot of genetic material already. They both actually have spots. These are dominant anyways, so it would definitely be passed on into any of the offspring. But unlike other lion crossbreeds, the males will not grow a mane. They grow to an average size somewhere between the two big cat species, with a lion being an average of 260 pounds and the jaguar being around 200 pounds. Their offspring would likely as not fall somewhere in the middle. However, there are so few of these animals that have ever been observed that there is very little information upon which to base our understanding of the crossbreed. In fact, they're so rare that there are currently only two of its kind of the animal on record anywhere, and they both reside in an animal sanctuary in Canada where they were born after a little bit of an accident. 
Number 6. The Pomsky Dog With all of the tinkering inside of animals, it is no wonder that people have begun to manufacture dogs to fulfill people's requirements. In fact, that is basically what all the breeding is anyways, if we're honest. This is the Pomsky, which is a designer breed created from the Siberian Husky and the Pomeranian. Now, you may be aware that there is a very big size difference between those two breeds, and it can be quite problematic, actually super dangerous. So many of these dogs are bred by the process of artificial insemination. There's been a high demand for these fluffy pooches that have a lot of features of the husky, which people desire, but without being quite so enormous or needing all of that pesky exercise. Ugh, people are actually the worst. So, instead of not having a husky on the account of it being an extremely active large dog with many needs, they just ordered a smaller and less difficult one instead. Obviously, this sort of fashion has only increased the breeding by less than scrupulous individuals who are looking to make a fast buck. And guess what? The animals end up suffering. Number 5. The Donkra Apparently, there's a bit of a trend for mixing things up in zoos in China, and zebras? Well, they seem to be getting a whole lot of action in the process. What I'm talking about here is, obviously, the combination of a donkey and zebra. But again, it does matter which one puts what and where. The zonkey is a specifically offspring of a male zebra and female donkey. When the father is the donkey and the mother is the zebra, well, their babies are known as donkras or zadonks. But frankly, that sounds silly. One such baby, Donkra, was born at a zoo in China, and it wore a donkey-esque brown coat on its body, but the snazziest of stripy zebra-style legs down below. It's quite the looker, and no doubt another draw for tourism to that particular zoo. But is breeding for novelty purposes and to get more zoo visitors really all that much of an ethical thing to do? It's a slippery slope, and then you may just begin thinking about breeding in general, or even the ethics of the existence of zoos. Yikes! Number 4. The Beefalo There are a couple of options for what this hybrid creature might be made from. A bee and a buffalo, perhaps? Well, that's what the name says. It seems insane, so it's probably not a massive flying buffalo with a stinger. No, boringly enough, it's a buffalo that's crossed with a cow. So the name is on the account of the combination of domestic cattle and buffalo being bred to produce tasty beef. That sucks for the sad old beefalo. Seems like it doesn't stand a chance, the poor creature. And then there's something kind of perverse about naming an animal for the dinner it's going to become. Or perhaps I'm being a bit too sensitive. Prolific. The general idea is that these animals have been developed from a heady mixture of female American bison and domesticated bull, the result of which is that the bison meat is flavorful and lean, but the animal is more docile and less of a menace than a full bison would be. Apparently, the usual amount of bison in the recipe is 37.5%, and the remainder is a domestic cow. Just how this mathematical tinkering is achieved is anyone's guess, but I would imagine that it's less than dignified for all the parties involved. If the combination of species is 50% or more bison, they're referred to as a catalo. Although I shouldn't imagine they actually care what they're being called. They have all had their feistiness bred right out of them, you know. Number 3. The Sturtlefish Back in 2019, some researchers were tinkering with the genetics of various fish, and they seemed to have accidentally created a new species by blunderously breeding an American paddlefish and a Russian sturgeon. They would announce this new, dankly named species, the Sturtlefish, in 2020, and both of them are at risk in the wild, so research was attempted to establish whether they may be bred in captivity, and they were not meant to be breeding together. What they were actually trying to do was to induce gynogenesis in one of the fish, of the hat normally. This is a process of reproduction whereby the sperm cell, although necessary, does not contribute genetically to any resulting offspring. They accidentally made literally hundreds of these hybrid fish. Since it was an accident, they've said that they do not plan to make any more. Any that did survive are apparently all still in captivity at the facility that they were made, and according to the surprised researchers, they had not expected any viable offspring to be produced, let alone the hundreds they ended up with. Sometimes that's just how it goes, I suppose. Number 2. Enviropig Up next we have a crazy idea that seems to have been made reality by those nutters in Canada. 
This is the Enviropig, a genetically engineered porcine creature which has been tinkered with to make its poos and peas much less full of phosphorus. Now you may be wondering why? Why is this something that anyone's interested in? Apparently phosphorus originating from animal waste is responsible for polluting many lakes, rivers, and deltas all across the world. It's a major cause of dangerous algae blooms which kill huge areas of water, destroying the aquatic life for miles around. But Canada has been messing about with the source of the problem to try and find a solution, but I don't know. I feel like this is an extreme idea. Maybe there are more simple ways to manage such things, like say, not polluting all the water bodies of the world in the first place rather than literally changing the genetics of a living animal. That way you can carry on with the same garbage behaviors. I mean, I don't know, it's clearly far more complicated than that. But anyways, this Enviropig is the latest ass-backward solution to pollution, and who would have really thunk it? Number 1. The Comma now, it must be tough being the only Kama in the village, let alone the only one on the planet, but that's just how it was for Rama the Kama. She was the only known hybrid Llama Camel to have been that way for years before a few more of her kind came along to keep her company at the Camel Reproduction Center in Dubai. Whether it's morally questionable to begin tinkering with and mixing breeds of animals entirely for human purposes, that remains to be addressed. It is certainly something that people have been doing for centuries with breeds of horses and cattle and dogs and such. So creating a camel llama to have the most useful characteristics of each species, that's not really so different. The comma is bred from the male camel and female llama. Apparently, it simply just doesn't work the other way around. The aim is to achieve a long coat of the llama, the strong desert-ready legs of the camel, and a happy medium with the rest of their features. Although they're both famously spitters, so that doesn't sound quite so promising. That was all completely messed up and pretty disturbing, but what do you think? Is genetic tinkering awesome or terrifying? Let me know all your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are currently showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time. I love you.